I doubt it. This is fixed. And yep, <laughs> not really. Shit. We are back, baby. Today I'm finally going to talk about the elephant in the room. She's back, and I'm going to say what's going on with this car. But first, I'm going to go meet up with Puria to go to Cars and Coffee, and then we're gonna talk about this board of elephant in the room. With that being said, welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to yet another vlog. Startup coming up in three, two, one. Also, for the first time, I'm not too late. I got 20 minutes to get there and it's just 15 minutes drive. I know I said I got enough time, but in three, two, one. Oh my God, I forgot how fast this car was. Wow. Man, I missed this car. That was legal speed, for sure. Well, I made it out here to the meetup spot, but they're not still here because I got here a little bit early. I don't know what happened, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but this is actually a good time because I want to show you guys the day I picked the car up. So let's go back in time for a few days and see when I initially first picked the car up after two and a half fix it been sitting in the dealership. Let's roll the clip, future and then. Well, finally, after two and a half weeks of my car being at the dealership, they just called me that my car is ready to be picked up. I'm gonna go return the Jeep and get my car back, and I'll tell you guys what's going on because it's ridiculous. Well, I took everything out of this car. I had some stuff in the back seat, and I had some stuff in the trunk, which I took out already, and it's ready to be returned. Latitude 4x4. Uh, should I wash the car or should I just return it like this? I think I should wash the car. Mm. Slow. Who really takes a white body scat pack into a brush car wash? Like, seriously. Okay, this is crazy. Damn. Car getting washed. Oh, well, we got the rental right there. And the car is here after two and a half fix. Let's see if it even actually fixed the exhaust because I doubt it. I doubt it. This is fixed. And yep, <laughs> not really. Shit. The man of the hour is here. Sheesh. <laughs> I also got an M4. This squeals are right, an M4, and this heavy thing. Do you guys think I can keep up? Also, what do you all think about this whole process of uh, picking the car up? That sounds good. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. We're gonna head to the highway. Hell yeah. Well, highways are gonna be a little bit fun to drive now on. Love how poor you're just cruising today. It's not going any crazy, which is good. We also got a here. Woohoo! That was good. We did make it out here, but there's a lot of a lot of cars. So I think instead of parking in this lot, we have to park on the other lot. Also cruising with an M4. Uh was pretty fun. And in the background we have a new Corvette as well as the 720s uh, which is coming from this way now good morning sir big time good morning good sir got legit kicks and brian good morning guys hey, morning. what a beauty this wow. is holy sheesh oh my freaking god isn't that just beautiful look at it so beautiful damn we got this beautiful gt350 right here You ready? For you? Ready? Well, one car is a copy down, and we're going to another one, which is 15 minutes that way. A couple Mustangs here, but then we have a lineup of uh, Challengers. Very nice, very nice. Oh, it's Mucho. More Challengers. 
So I pulled up to this cars and company in Leesburg. We've never been to. Actually, we came uh, to Leesburg cars and company once a year ago, but this is way bigger than that, and it moved to a new location. And the cars are just absolutely phenomenal. It's beautiful. Look at that 720s coming in. This is the same one you guys saw in the morning. But what do you think, Priya? Do you like it? Yeah, it's dope. It's dope. Different vibes. Yeah, it is. But then uh, there's this like beautiful 308 GTB Ferrari here that is just like amazing. Let me show you. This is just this is just amazing. Like the color, wow. That's beautiful. What a car! What a car! Fun fact: uh, my dad owned a black one one time in his life. He did for a year. That's a nice color. Another Ferrari, and this is I don't, I don't know what it is to be honest, but it's pretty cool. It's actually really cool. Alex in the house. What's up, bro? Welcome, welcome. Good seeing you. This guy's trying to leave, and everyone's asking about his car. What do you drive, sir? Is it a Lambo, Aventador? A Corolla. To is, is that a Toyota V10 Plus Corolla yeah. Camry? Yeah. Turd? <laughs> so beautiful. Wow. Well, we're back again. Uh, today is basically a few days after the last time you guys saw me talking about talking about what's going on with this car. And I'm sorry for the delay and the shift between all these videos that you have watched. Also, I had to get the car washed. And because of this gas crisis that we have now, uh, I couldn't find any gas station with any car wash. But guys, now is the time to finally, finally talk about the elephants in the room. Well, this vehicle was in the shop for two and a half weeks two and a half weeks and i basically took it in complaining about this exhaust being like this it was a little bit lower now they actually made it go higher a little bit but also i started experiencing some clicking noises from my exhaust every time i started accelerating or rev my engine and the car was sitting in the shop for two and a half weeks because they were trying to figure out what is going on and i sent them a video with my door open so I can get the sound and uh, the sound was actually in the video. After a week, they called me and they're like, Mr. Jafari, we cannot figure out what is the noise from your door. I was like, my door? And all of a sudden it all made sense because I had the door open for them to hear the noise better from my exhaust and they thought the door is making a noise and that's why I took the car in. Uh, yeah, you already know. But after two and a half weeks, they figure out what the clicking noise is and they told me it's not under warranty because of my exhaust modifications even though it's not that super modified i just don't have resonators and apparently if they get it fixed they have to send the resonators back to dodge or chrysler and they cannot do that however i have to give chrysler a call or fca a call to discuss this problem with them and hopefully they can process it and get this thing fixed and also this exhaust right here that you see is still not fixed well i have already talked to the service director about it and he told me basically to take this car to a exhaust shop because this is the best they can do in the shop and he told me to take it to exhaust shop get them quoted to see how much it takes for them to fix it and the dealership will actually reimburse whatever the cost is for me to get this exhaust fixed so that's actually something really nice for them to do even though they did fail on my exhaust and you guys know the whole story if you don't it's gonna be linked in the description or pop up in the banner go watch that video because it's just like mind-blowing it's just crazy i hope you guys understood what's going on if you didn't please let me know in the comment section down below i will try my best to explain better and i uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video as well if you did again make sure to let me know in the comment section down below and also like this video and subscribe if you haven't already we are on our way to a thousand subscribers next up is 500 subscribers and guys i've been telling you that at a giveaway a big giveaway coming out in a thousand subscribers so make sure 100 percent make sure to subscribe and share this video with others and if yourself or someone that you know have had some problems with chrysler or fca getting the car fixed getting these problems that i have mentioned in this video in the previous videos let me know in the comment section as well and with that all being said always stay amazing and see you guys in the next one What is this? Just 
why?